Hi guys, Lewis here and welcome to this belated edition of Piranha Bytes. So as usual I've checked out a couple of new releases to see what's worth reading and whatnot, and um, here's what I found. Um, so the first one I wasn't overly convinced by when I looked at it, but don't judge a book by its cover, especially in comics obviously. Um, so what we've got here over at Image is Frontiersman number one. Um, and what I've said about a couple of releases, um, you know, over the last few episodes of this is that they're not creators I've heard of, but give them a try because, you know, they could be your next favourite writer or artist. Um, so Patrick Kindlin and Marco Ferrari on this, and they don't do a bad job at all, got to admit. So um, the basic conceit or premise of this is um, Frontiersman is a retired superhero. Um, kind of lives alone in his hut in the woods and just wants to be left alone, that sort of thing. And then a kind of student slash, I guess, wannabe activist tracks him down and tries or is trying to recruit him for like their cause because um, they're um, heavily into, you know, environmental issues and promoting that. And in that way, it almost kind of reminds me of like, uh, you know, the way Morrison put forward those um, animal rights issues in his Animal Man run. And same with Alan Moore and um, his environmentalist agenda and swamp thing. So it's kind of got that angle going for it. But also it's got kind of the whole um, jaded old man superhero archetype that you get in, you know, a book like A Dark Knight Returns or An Old Man Logan or something like that. So um, really interesting um, meshing of tones of runs and series I really like. So there was no reason I wouldn't like this. Um, so quite an interesting number one I recommend you check out if you've not heard about it already. And then on the more mainstream front over at Marvel, we have Death of Doctor Strange. Um, another recent Jed McKay number one. Um, and he impresses me more and more each time because um, I remember when I first saw his name, I was like, ah, he's okay. Um, but I say that every time and I realise that everything I've read of him I really like. So he's getting up there for me. He's doing a really good job. Um, it's for the fact that this book is called Death of Doctor Strange, it's got quite a light-hearted, fun tone to it. Um, spoiler, he dies. And then it turns out that he's already planned for this, and a version of him from the future has come in and got involved. Because he's like, all right, fine, here, we've got a problem. And there's, you know, baddies and villains and everything from each realm and every corner of the universe now getting in and trying to push their agenda and um, take over the world and whatever, because they know that um, the Sorcerer Supreme is no longer among us. So really worth a check out again if you're liking his stuff on moon knight you liked his daredevil mini series you liked his black cat all that sort of stuff it's another one to check out and doctor strange brings me on to my kind of golden oldie from the vault pick the first volume of jason aaron's doctor strange run with uh, chris bachelor on the art um awesome stuff i remember when this came out in issues and i, I was all over a lot of marvel stuff because they did a pretty clean reboot after secret wars and a lot of great stuff was coming out in that period this is no exception jason aaron was on fire at this time um he's he was still in the middle of his thor run which i personally think is the best thor run ever um and yeah this was the beginning of doctor strange being a must read book Basically, any time there's been a Doctor Strange title ever since. Because you had Jason Aaron at the time, had Donny Cates afterwards, Mark Wade after that, who has written my favourite superhero comic ever, which is Kingdom Come. Um, so, yeah, this was the start of Doctor Strange being a must-read book. So, really recommend it if you've not read it already. Um, and then on to more releases that I think could be worth your time, depending on what you're into, obviously. Alien number one, not number one, sorry, number seven. Um, but it's number one in the sense that it's the start of a new arc. So if you're familiar at all with the Alien universe and want to get in, you don't have to have read the previous issues, you can jump in right here. Uh, Aquaman the Becoming, um, new character, a new take on that mythos. Um, don't know too much about that yet, looking forward to checking it out, because um, I think I said in a previous one of these, I'm a big Aquaman fan. I just hope they do it right, because I really like, I, I hate seeing him... Um, in the wrong hands because Aquaman needs all the help he can get getting fans. So having bad runs and whatever doesn't do the character any favours. Um, Batman doing its thing with issue 113, just currently in the middle of Fear State. If you're enjoying Tinian stuff, it's just more of the same. Um, 
I personally like his more indie work. Um, I think he's better on horror titles and stuff like that. Department of Truth might be my favourite thing he's doing right now. But his Batman's still really good and really worth checking out. Because when is Batman not worth checking out? Um, over at Image, again, we got King Spawn issue 2. So if you like the first one, it's more of that going. Sean Lewis is the guy writing it. Very decent. Um, he did a really cool mini series a while back over at Image called Thumbs. So if you've not heard of that, I uh, strongly urge you to check that out because um, I don't think I think they got overlooked by a lot of people. Star Wars carrying on doing its thing with the whole bounty hunters stuff. It's on issue 16 now. Ethan Sachs again, no slouch at all. I first got into him through Old Man Hawkeye, um, and what a surprise that was because I remember when that came out, I was like, ah, it's gimmicky and whatever else. I like it just as much as Old Man Logan. It turns out really good. So yeah, he's another guy I generally look out for. Chip Zarsky doing his thing on Stillwater. Um, anything he does is a must read, so carry on with that if you're already on it. Supergirl issue 4. Well, Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow issue 4, should I say. Uh, by Tom King. Again, another one really pumping it out at the moment. He's got Supergirl. He's got Raw, Raw, Rorschach, I think, has just finished. Um, and what's the other one? Strange Adventures, I think, is coming out next week, and then that'll be finishing soon. Um, still waiting on more Batman Catwoman because I want that to end because I want to see how that goes. I was a big fan of his Batman run and I want to see the, uh, the epilogue tie it all together. X-Men issue 3. Um, I wish I could tell you more about that but I've not kept up with X-Men since the start of Hickman because as much as he's awesome and House and Powers of X was excellent, uh, or 10, whatever you call it, um, I admitted to myself I wouldn't keep up with all the titles I generally read so yeah, but um, I'm sure Chris the Crowen will tell you more about that on his posts over on our Facebook, so check those out if you don't already. And staying with the X-Men theme, and finally, X-Men The Onslaught Revelation. Um, so this is by Cy Spurrier, and it's for those that were checking out Way of X, because it wraps all that up. Um, so those are the ones I think are like the highlights of the week, but as always, go over and check out our newsletter by Dave, because he gives you a comprehensive list of everything that's out. Uh, until next Piranha. week, thank you.